This morning, send forth your word. Build up your body. Bless your people. Bless your church. Make your people strong. Build up for yourself a mighty army in this place, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Lord, as I open my mouth, send forth your word. To meet the needs of your people. Exact needs of all your people here today. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Put your hands together loud for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's be seated. This morning, we are going to talk about stirring up your faith. I want to talk about something to stir up your faith. To hold on to God. To enable God to do what he wants in your life. You you see, for, for God to do what you want, for God to bless you, you need to believe him. For God to do miracles for you, you need to have faith in him. Without faith, there is nothing we can receive from God. Tell somebody, without faith, you can't get anything from God. Hallelujah. I want to begin my exhortation to you this morning. If you like to call it a sermon, whatever you like to call it. I want to begin from the book of Psalms. Psalm 125 verse 1. Trust in the Lord, you will not be disappointed. That's the subject I'm talking about this morning. Let's begin by looking at Psalm 125, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. I I like that. When I look at that, I like that I want to trust in the Lord. So I'll be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Amen. But abided forever. It reveals the power of trusting in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. I like that. What about you? Uh, That motivates me to trust in the Lord. That when I trust in the Lord, I'm immovable. You can't push me around. You can't put me in any corner you like. I'm like Mount Zion that cannot be moved, but which abided forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever may be the needs in your life, whatever may be the challenges, whatever may be what you may even call obstacles, whatever may be the level of warfare that you may be facing i want you to understand that all you need to do is to trust in the lord whether it has to do with healing it has to do with deliverance 
It has to do with financial blessings, getting financial promotion, or whatever it has to do with. All you need to do is to trust in the Lord. And don't try to do it all by yourself. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Amen, amen. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. So as a child of God, as a covenant person of God, you are not alone at all. You are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. I mean, cannot be disturbed, cannot be jostled around, cannot be thrown around. And the Bible goes further to say, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. So you are not alone. Tell somebody, tell yourself, first of all, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Tell your neighbor you are not alone. The Lord is with you. Hallelujah. In life there, there is no how, there will be no challenges. You don't need to call them problems. Just call them challenges. Sometimes the word problem makes some people afraid. But whatever you call it, if it's a problem, every problem will receive a solution. Amen. When God shows up, there is no problem that has no solution. If it's an obstacle, every obstacle will be removed when Jehovah God shows up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But faith is very prominent in all these things we're talking about. Your faith in God. Don't try to live your life all by yourself. Put God first. And whatever you want to achieve in life, he's going to put you over. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 37, verses 4 and 5. Let's start from 3. Let's make it 3 to 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Thou shalt be fed. That means you will not starve. You will not be hungry. You will not lack any good thing. Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I don't know what desires you have in your heart, but God does. God knows. Well, how do you get your desires performed? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thine heart, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? The Bible says the Lord will bring them to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Trusting in the Lord means to believe. That he cares for you. You can't trust in me if you don't believe I love you. How many of you know that? You can't trust in me unless you first of all believe that I love you. Do you understand that? You can't trust in anybody unless you first of all believe that person loves you. It's difficult for a wife to trust in a husband. She does not believe loves her. Likewise, it's difficult for a man to trust in a wife. He does not believe loves him. I've heard of men who, lo- who no longer eat their wife's food. They are still husband and wife. But when the wife makes food for him to eat, he is very skeptical. He is thinking the woman may poison him. So he doesn't trust in her. Trust in the Lord. You can't trust in the Lord unless you believe the Lord loves you. Say to yourself, the Lord loves me. The Lord wants the best for me. You can't trust in the Lord unless you believe he loves you and he wants the best for you. Sometimes we humans behave very foolishly. When the Lord gives us a counsel, we begin to think the Lord has given us a selfish counsel. The Lord told me to do this because it pays the Lord. He may not pay me. That's the way we think somehow. (laughs) Uh, uh, We begin to, uh, uh, no, no, no. Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, Lord. For example, paying tithes. Some people feel, ah, the Lord told me to pay tithe because he wants to use the money for his church. Uh, me too, I need money. I need money in my pocket. How foolish we are sometimes. And we begin to think the Lord gave us that advice because it pays the Lord, but it does not pay us. 
we begin to think the Lord gave us that advice because he is selfish about his relationship with us. How, how foolish. How foolish. So what does that reveal? It reveals people like that don't trust the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? They don't trust him. They don't trust him. If you have 100,000 in your hands, better still, you have a million naira in your hands, better still 5 million, and your good friend, you say, give it to me. I'll give you back next week. Five million. Hello? But your friend, you know, five million is, is like five naira to him. Are you understanding? He said, give me that five million. I'll give you back. I'll give back tomorrow. I'll give you a check. I'll transfer it to your account when I get home. Huh? If you trust your friend, it won't be difficult. Isn't it? Number one, you trust in his ability to give you back. Are you understanding? If it's a friend you know does not have five naira and he's telling you to give him five million, you will find it difficult to believe, isn't it? You say, how are you going to get it tomorrow? Where will you get it from? Boy, this is your friend. You know him very well. You know his ability. You know, five million to him is no more than five naira to an average man. He said, give me, he said, come on, give me that money. I'll give it back tomorrow. Because you trust your friend, you'll give it to him. You are not going to have any fear. But some of us humans, we are so foolish in the way we relate with God. God says, give me your tithes, whatever your tithe is. 100,000, 200,000, 1 million, 5 million naira. You say, come on, give me that height. Give me some money. I want to preach on the radio. I want to do this. And you begin to say, this money, then you begin to remember the Englishman's uh, adage or aphorism, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Isn't it? White man's English man says a bird in hand is what two in the bush. The bird you have in your hand is what two in the bush that you have not caught. That's what the white man says. That may be true when you are dealing with a natural level. But when you understand that God is supernatural, he said, Give me your tithe. I'll multiply it back to you. Give me offerings. If you trust in the Lord, then you are going to give it. But why don't some give it? They don't really trust in the Lord. Some of us Christians are so foolish. We don't know the ability of our God. You think if you give God 100,000, you are going to die because of that? You think if you give him 10 million, that's going to ruin or sink your finances? Because you are limiting God. You are limiting God. You, you fail to have a revelation of God. The more you are able to trust in God, the more you will enjoy his blessings. Say that loud. The more I'm able to trust in God, the more I will enjoy his blessings. That's very true. Some Christians have money, want to, supposed to pay a tithe of 100,000. You begin to think, ah, this money, I can do so and so with it. The Bible said the Lord will multiply it back. He will open the windows of heaven. But he does not believe. Because if you believe, you will give it. He doesn't believe. He doesn't trust in the Lord. What does that mean? He doesn't trust in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Hallelujah. By virtue of not trusting in the Lord, he has removed himself or herself from the position of those who will be like Mount Zion. So if any storm should come at all, now, I didn't say God will send a storm. Are you understanding? But the storm may come on his own. You don't pay tight. You don't give to God. God is not after you. But there are storms in the world. You are no longer in the category of those who can be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed. You lose the benefits of those who trust in the Lord. You expose yourself to satanic power. It's not about money alone. It's about everything in life. Good health, having victory over satanic power, exercising authority over the devil, walking in the power of God, prospering in your career, in your finances, receiving whatever blessings you need from God. All takes trusting in him. The more you can trust God, the more you enjoy him. Hallelujah. Yoruba people, they have a, a saying, a funny saying. 
se bo ba se lowo to lo se gbadun oyibo abi o wa e ba se ma lo se gbadun oyibo mo abi isn't it is it a lie is it a lie can i translate that for you he said as your money is that's the way you will enjoy the white man in other words you have money to buy a standing fan hello it will stand and be blowing your head isn't it and you sleep but it won't get to if your room is very wide it may not get to some other people there or your sitting room in your bedroom may not get to where your wife is this fan is small but if you have more money you buy this industrial fan put it at one corner of your bedroom you and your wife the breeze the wind will even be too much isn't it everybody will get his own share amen you have more money just put an ac in the room huh it solves every problem everything will just be cool isn't it you won't even sweat hallelujah hallelujah so it is true the richer you are that's what yoruba man say but the meaning of that is the more money you have the more you will enjoy technological discoveries that's what they are saying amen the more you enjoy scientific or technological discoveries or products hallelujah hallelujah you have a phone you receive calls only a call but you have more money you can buy a better phone you don't only receive call you can send email you can listen to radios you can go on the internet you can scan your documents without running around hallelujah as some phones you have you are making a call somebody said i sent you a text i sent you a text he said ah i don't know whether the text has come in he said let me cut it let me cut the call and check my text message hello but some types of phone you don't need to cut your call as you are talking you just press pin 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 and you are checking the text message at the same time you are talking you are even checking your email i've sent you an email okay let me see you are still talking it can open several pages are you understanding so the more money you have the more you enjoy technological discoveries or products you have a phone you put a, a little salmon on it and some music that you like before you know it says your phone is filled up your phone becomes very slow and dragging because the ram size of your phone is very small the ram size of your phone is just maybe it's 512 or whatever and before you put small things there it's, it's not functioning well you try you bought one with ram size of one gig you do better before you know they it say it's full again but if you have more money you are able to buy a phone of ram size of four or five hello then you can be able to do several things some phones you have you can open only one or two internet pages some you can open so many are you getting what i'm saying can be checking this checking that doing several things at the same time very true the more money you have the more you enjoy technological discoveries or products back to what i'm talking about the greater your trust in god the more you will enjoy his blessings that's where i'm going if you have a little trust you will enjoy god in a little way <laughs> if you have a great trust in god you will enjoy him greatly you enjoy his blessings very greatly because you trust in the lord you enjoy him those who enjoy the blessings of the lord more are those who trust in him those who have greater trust in him amen very simple example he that sweat sparingly shall reap also sparingly he that sweat bountifully shall reap also bountifully now someone trusts in the lord is able to pay tithes he gets the reward of the tithe. Amen. Hello. Someone has given his tithe to the Lord. But he says, I'm going to give a large offering. His offering is as large as his tithe. Hello. He's going to get more blessings than you who give a little offering. Why? He trusts the Lord more. He believes releasing his money for God is not a loss. And he believes the Lord will bring it back. Amen. Comes to the area of healing. Two Christians, one is able to trust in the Lord to heal his body. And the moment he takes the word of God, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Isaiah 53. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. 
By his stripes I am healed. Amen. He believes the Lord. Before you know what's happening, he lay hands on his own head and rebook the fever, rebook the sickness. Before you know what's happening, it's gone. Hallelujah. Whereas a Christian like him, who is not able to trust in the Lord, he said, do you believe the Lord will hear you? He said, yes, I believe. I'm, I'm going to see my doctor. He said, do you really believe? He said, yes, yes, I believe. But l- let me see my doctor. Any sin in seeing your doctor? No. There's no sin in it. Thank God it's not a sin. Some people tell you it's a sin to go and see a doctor. No, it's not. Let me read some of these scriptures I refer to. I did not, just for you to know, those who do not know where it is, I was talking about finances. I said, he that swears sparingly shall reap also. Sparingly, he that swears bountifully shall reap bountifully. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose set in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's for finances. And I was talking about healing. I told you he was wounded for our transgressions. If you don't know where it is, let's go to Isaiah. Don't let me assume everybody knows. Most of you should know, but everybody may not know. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 4. And verse 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. A believer holds the word of God. He that swears bountifully shall be bountifully. After paying his tithes, he releases a, a bountiful offering for God. I've told you, don't let your offering be less than your tithe. How many of you remember? It's for your own good. But this believer is able to trust in the Lord. Some, some people think God is trying to fall one night them. Yeah? Say, how can I, all this money, I give it to God, give it to church? God is not for one night. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how it came about that. How they came about that <laughs> terminology for one night. But you all know what it means. God is not a froster. Amen. At least this part of the world, for one night. When they say for one night, they mean a froster. Everybody knows that, isn't it? God is not a froster. God will not dupe you. It's not a duper. But this person keeps his tithe, keeps his money. But the other Christian, he say, I'll give my tithe. And after the tithe, he gave an offering even more than his tithe. Of course, God is in heaven. God will respond. Before you know what's happening, doors start to open for him. Greater doors in his finances. Bigger contracts start to come in for him. Why? His trust in the Lord is greater than the one that cannot even give his tithe. Still greater than the one that gave his tithe, but after the tithe, he finds it difficult to give any other thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because he has greater trust in the Lord, he's able to give more, so he will get more from God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Likewise, the believer who says, you fever, I rebook you. His friend says, why is your body temperature so high? Your body temperature is so high? Go to the clinic. He works in a company where they have a clinic. Are you understanding? And he won't pay. It's free of charge. It's why I say, go to the clinic. Let them treat you. It doesn't cost him money. Hey, now, well, well, well. If it was money, he was trying to save. What will happen now? If money was the priority. Some people come for prayers because they don't want to spend money. Do you know that? Do you know that? Faith is not really their first choice. Are you getting what I'm saying? If they had plenty of cash, they wouldn't come for prayers. They would say, let me go and see my doctor. That's why some of those people don't get healed. It's not their first priority. Again, they don't really believe. Or this brother say, his friend say, your body temperature is high. Oh, what's wrong with you? You have fever. Go to the doctor. The doctors are there. Go, go there. Let them give you injection. Let them treat you. Hallelujah. The brother says, no, I'm okay. I'm healed. By his stripes, I am healed. That was 8 a.m. in the morning. What time? Because he shook hands with him. 
What's wrong with your body? By 12 noon, he went to his seat again. You know some people are troublesome. Some of your co-workers. By 12 o'clock, he went to him again. I touched his hand. He said, boy, don't die in this place. Go, go to the doctor. Your body is still hot. Say, no, no, I'm healed. You are looking at the wrong thing. You are looking at the wrong thing. The Bible says, by his stripes, I am healed. You don't understand. Leave it for God. Amen. Before you know what's happening, because he has faith in God, in a little while, the anointing of healing from God will touch his body. The fever will lift. We just disappear. Whereas the one that went for injection, they will say, come back tomorrow. Huh? You are going to take three injections. You are going to take tablets for seven days. Huh? At the end of the seven days, they may say, we want to change the medicine again. Hello. Doctors are trying. They are good people, isn't it? But they are not God. God knows your body. He knows what's in your body. So the brother may still be on the treatment for two, three weeks. Whereas the one that decided to trust in the Lord, in a little while, two, three hours, less than that sometimes, the fever is gone. Hello. They are both children of God. So, but the one that has a greater trust in God is able to enjoy God more. Do you understand? So the greater your trust in God, the greater you are going to enjoy his blessings. You believe the word of God for healing? His healing anointing will flow in your life. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. By his stripes I am healed. That's the way First Peter says, says it. By his stripes I am healed. Say it loud. If you believe that word of God, it will generate healing power in your body. Every word of God is a generator. What did I say? It's a generator. There are some softwares. Sorry, we may not all know about softwares. But there are some softwares you use. And on the top, you are going to see a menu they call generate. How many of you have used any software like that before? Not many. Nobody. All right. Away. Okay, good. You click generate. There's a menu there. Now, what do I want to bring out? The word of God is a generator. Every word of God is a generator. It can generate healing power. It can generate financial blessings. It can generate power over satanic power. Shout hallelujah. He was wounded for my transgressions. I've told you many times to make it personal. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes I am healed. Amen. As you believe in that, and you speak it, it will generate healing power. It will do what? It will generate it. Just like you start your, your generator, your electric generator, electricity generator, you start it, what does it generate? Electricity. But the word of God, when you start it, how do you kick start the word of God as a generator? How? By speaking it with faith. When you speak the word of God with faith, it's like you kick start your generator. The word is a generator. It will generate what it was created to generate. Amen. Every word of God is created to generate certain things. Isaiah said it. But it is those who trust in the Lord who will enjoy the Lord. It is those who trust in the Lord who will enjoy the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah, another chapter. Let's go to chapter 55. Chapter 55, verse 8, verse 9. I think we get to verse 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hello. You are thinking of how to start a project of two million naira. And you sat down in your house, you started to rack your brain. Hey, how will I get two million? Ah. 
Uncle Tom. I will tell him to lend me some money. Auntie Anne, I will give her a phone call. You start to plot your graphs. When you have imagined five ways of getting money, are you understanding? God has more than a thousand ways. That's why he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You are thinking you must borrow that money, isn't it? But if you are a person who is trusting in the Lord, it can make certain things happen that will precipitate that money in your hands. Do you remember your chemistry? What is a precipitate? A precipitate is usually a sudden formation. What did I say? I said, God, we make things happen that will precipitate the money in your hands. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. If and only if you are able to trust in him. While your friend is thinking of five ways, ten ways, running from pillar to post, God knows what to make or cause to happen so that that money will be delivered to your hand suddenly. As sudden as a precipitate forms. Hallelujah. Because you trust in the Lord. Just like that, your body is healed because you trust in the Lord. And the same sickness, somebody is still taking treatment for a month. Who is enjoying the Lord more? The, the person that trusts the Lord for his healing. Tell somebody, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways. Says the Lord. Now, this is not talking about iniquity alone. I know usually when we read this, we begin to think of sin. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Okay. But when you are born again, he renews your mind. Amen? And you are delivered from evil thinking. You no longer think sinful thoughts. But it's not talking about holiness alone. It's talking also about what I just told you. Power. Ability to generate miracles, to do things for you. While you are thinking of one way, God has a million ways. Shout hallelujah. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Your thoughts are so parochial. They are so narrow-minded. You are thinking, uh, if I... If I give this money to God, how will I get another money? Because you are narrow-minded. You are narrow-minded. You fail to see that God can open many channels to bring you money. More than you have ever had before. If I don't see the doctor, what will happen? Will I not die? Because you are narrow-minded. You are only seeing natural things. You don't see spiritual things. Now, don't get it wrong. You must have faith to receive healing from God. If you don't have faith, then go and see your doctor. Amen. Amen. Don't die before your time. Amen. Amen. Because God will not heal you unless you have faith. That's the rule. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and board. That he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it will accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Amen. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And he shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The word of God will prosper in the thing whereto he has sent it. I told you every word of God is designed to generate something. Did you re- can you remember? He said, my word will accomplish that which I please. What does that mean? It will accomplish what I purpose it to accomplish. Hallelujah. I want to read down the Amplified Bible. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. In bracket, without producing any effect. The word of God will never return to God 
without producing any effect, does he return? He does. He says it shall not return void. He doesn't say it will not return at all. It returns to give reports. It returns because it's spirit. It returns to give report. Yes, sir. I've been there. His body is healed. It's fine now. Amen. Yes, sir. I've been there. The poverty is broken. Himself, his wife and children, they are enjoying now. Amen. Yes, sir. I've been there and back. Reporting to God. The demons have been cast out. And there is peace in the family. Amen. God does not say he will not return. He said he will not return void. The word is spirit. So it goes back to give a feedback to God. Every word that God speaks is spirit. It's spirit. There is enough power in you to destroy any satanic power anywhere on earth. I'm talking of you alone. You, you, you alone as a child of God. Yes. You alone as a child of God if you know how to bring out the best that God has put in you, are you understanding? You can release enough power to destroy any level of satanic power anywhere in the world. You alone. Hallelujah. Does that make prayer meetings wrong? No, it does not. It does not. Does that make praying with my wife or my husband wrong? No, it doesn't make it wrong. But just know that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. When he said he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world, he was talking about you as a person. You as a person. Hallelujah. So when two or three or four Christians now come together, Satan should not have a chance at all. Are you understanding? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. In bracket, without producing any effect. Useless. But it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. Verse 10 says, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and return it not either again, but what are the other make it bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Hallelujah. It shall not return to me void. The word of God will not return to God empty. It will return to give a report of victory. Because the word is spirit. The word is spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. When it comes to fighting satanic power, it's the same thing. Those who trust in the Lord will speak, and demons will vamoose. They will disappear. They will take to their heels. Because a child of God has spoken. He has spoken with authority. Because he understands that power belongs to God. And not to the devil. Not to any man. Because he believes the word of God. That says I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you trust in God for that. You will enjoy the dividends. The dividends will flow into your life. The dividends of peace. The dividends of victory over the power of the enemy. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you trust in God for that you will reap the dividends. You reap the dividends. Someone tries to use demonic power to attack you. As you speak, the power will be destroyed. It will be quenched. You quench them once and for all. You quench them like the fire of thorns. When you quench the fire of thorns, it doesn't have ability to burn again. No, thorns don't burn much. It doesn't have much material for burning. If the enemy comes against you, you can quench them as the fire of thorns. 
But well, that's for those who trust in the Lord. Psalm 118 verse 12. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Can you say amen? They compass me about like bees. They are quaint as the fire of thorns. Compassing about like bees, it means from all directions. Are you paying attention there? From all directions. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen somebody surrounded by bees? It's very bad. Because it's from all directions. They sting him from all directions. It's not possible for him to say he will stop one by his hand. Are you understanding? Because they are just coming from all directions. So now, if the enemy compasses you like bees, you know what that means now? There are so many that the possibility of I will defend myself does not arise. But you will need to do the defense. Jehovah God will defend you. Amen. If the enemy compasses me about like bees, or if my enemies compass me about like bees, I will quench them like the fire of thorns. Have you seen thorns before? I know you have. Thorns, they don't have much wood. Do they? Just tiny things. So it barely manages to burn. What did I say? Barely manages to burn. So when you quench the fire of thorns, it doesn't rise again. It doesn't have capacity to burn again. But when he said the warfare of the enemy will be quenched like the fire of thorns, He's talking of being quenched permanently. Hallelujah. Those who trust in the Lord shall be at Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, which abided forever. Yes, cannot be removed. Your trust in the Lord will quench satanic power. That's what I'm talking about. Person who believes what Jesus says. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and not it shall by enemies hurt you. It rises without fear against demonic power and they are quenched. Amen. They are quenched. He enjoys the Lord more than a Christian who is still thinking these demons are going to attack him. But because he doesn't have faith, he suffers unnecessary attack. They are both Christians. But the one that believes the word of God, that trusts in the Lord, we enjoy the Lord better. Also now in the area of victory over demonic power. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Paul looked like somebody from another planet when a serpent beat him and they were expecting him to swell up and die and nothing happened to him. He just shook it into the fire. You remember after escaping the shipwreck, when the ship was broken in pieces and God saved him miraculously, and because of the grace of God upon his life, God saved the people with him. And he escaped that terrible death. And they were sitting down. The villagers brought some wood together to make fire for them. It was a cold season. And a serpent came out of the wood, the fire they were making. And fasting his Fangs on the hands of Paul the Apostle. Um, before he knew what was happening, he was beaten by the serpent. People will have thought this, the villager said, this man is really, really wicked. He escaped the accident on the sea. And now where he is, a serpent came to bite him. Why was it Paul that the serpent went to bite? Some people have said he was the most wicked. So, that's what, that was what the villagers thought. They said, this man is wicked. Of all people here, is the one the serpent is, has come to bite. But God wanted to show forth his power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Paul easily just shook the beast into the fire. Tell somebody, shake the beast into the fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Acts 28. Let's start from verse 1. And when they were escaped, then they knew the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain. 
and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the, bar- when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to leave. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. How be it? They looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> they changed their minds. Your enemies will change their minds about you. I say your enemies will change their minds. Shout Hallelujah! They changed their mind. They said, this man is not, he's not a wicked person. He's, they said, he's a God. Though. He's not a human being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your enemies, when they have used all kind of demonic power, juju or auto rock or whatever they call it in your language, and it does not work, they will change their minds about you. And they will say, that woman is not a human being. That man is not a human being. It's not an ordinary person. Yes, you are not ordinary because Christ is in you. Amen? Because Christ is in you. Shout hallelujah. If you were to be an ordinary Christian who does not understand the power of the Holy Ghost, when when he was beaten by that serpent, if he didn't die, he would still be on treatment for many days. Are you understanding? But Paul just shook into the fire. Why? The level of his trust in the law that this this cannot do me anything. The power of the blood of Jesus is in me. The poison of that serpent cannot do anything in my body. He understood. He didn't even pray. Are you understanding? He didn't even start to say, hey, let us pray. Oh. He didn't say, hey, come and pray for me. Nothing is wrong if you say that. But his level of, his level of faith was so high. He disdained that evil power or poison of the serpent. You can't do me anything. Because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Because the blood of Jesus flows in my veins. Hallelujah. The more you trust in the Lord, the more you enjoy his blessings. That's the way to enjoy his blessings, to trust in him. The more you trust in him, the more you enjoy his blessings. Let's read one more scripture, then I stop there. Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Amen. Christians who believe this are going to have every weapon formed against them destroyed. Whereas those who don't believe it, the weapons formed against them will be giving them headache. They'll be running from pillar to post, looking for help. Whereas a believer who believes this, whether in the day or in the night, when he speaks the word with faith, every power of Satan will bow. Amen. Every power of the devil will crumble. Every power of the devil will be destroyed. And he's going to have his victory. Amen. Amen. Failure to trust in God makes you to miss many blessings that God can give you. Sometimes, failure to trust in God brings his anger. It depends on the level. Sometimes, failure to trust in God will bring his anger. Will bring even his judgment. Regularly, failure to trust in the Lord will make you to miss a lot of blessings that you would have gotten from the Lord. But sometimes, failure to trust in the Lord can bring his wrath, bring his anger. And that was what happened to the children of Israel. You know, Moses sent 12 spies. Two of them trusted in the Lord. Ten did not trust in the Lord. When they were at the brink of the promised land, the land of Canaan, and they were about to enter, and they said to Moses, let's go and spy, let's send spies to go and see the land. The idea of sending spies itself 
was because they didn't fully trust in the Lord. Though the Lord permitted it, but it was the people that wanted to send spies. The one that said to Moses, let's send spies to go and see the land. And their spies brought back evil reports. God permitted them because they, that was the level at which they wanted to operate. Let's go to Numbers, Numbers 13. Let's go to verse 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron. And to all the congregation of the children of Israel. Unto the wilderness of Paran. To Kadesh. And brought back word unto them. And unto all the congregation. And showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said. We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless. The people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Enoch there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea. And by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb steal the people before Moses. And said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land. Which they have searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it. Is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. They brought a bad report. Look at the next chapter, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Who God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or who God we have died in this wilderness? At the end of the story, they died in the wilderness. God was angry with their lack of trust. They failed to trust in God to take them to possess the land. And God brought judgment of destruction upon all of them. Upon all those who did not trust him. And those who trusted in him inherited the land. Hallelujah. Caleb, the son of Jephoni. Joshua, the son of Nun. They inherited the good land. And those who failed to trust in the Lord, they died by judgment in the wilderness. I told you sometimes failure to trust in the Lord can bring his anger. You remember? This is an example. But regularly, every time, failure to trust in the Lord makes you to miss, to lose his blessings. Every time. But sometimes, it even brings his anger. So it's a dangerous thing not to trust in the Lord. Tell somebody, trust in the Lord. Say to yourself, oh my soul, trust in the Lord at all times. Let's stop here for today. Let's stop here. Let's stand up. Let's give thanks to God. Let's say, Father, we thank you for your word. We glorify your holy name. What are you facing or what is confronting you? What is trying to make you afraid? Don't allow yourself to be made afraid. All you need to do is to trust in the Lord and he will give you the victory. He will give you the victory. He will give you the victory. Begin to say, Lord, I give you thanks for the word I've had today. Let the word produce fruit in my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the word make me stronger. Let it make my faith stronger. The word I've had give me grace to understand. Let it mix with faith in my heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it mix with faith in my heart and make my faith stronger. And make me a stronger child of God. I want to begin to enjoy my God more than ever before. 
I want to enjoy the blessings of my father more than ever before. 